was Cork 217, Limerick 22 points. Fantastic victory for Cork. Great start for Pat Ryan. A late win against the All Ireland champions. Yeah, look, and this was this was actually a really, really good game for the time of the year, and I really, really enjoyed this. And that look, first half, I suppose, bit bit daunting, I suppose, for Cork was that they go in 16 8 down at half time, and uh, look, Limerick were absolutely turned it on. Hegarty was unmark- unmarkable in the first half, that everything he touched was just turned to goal straight away, and that. They just seemed to be really, really sharp. They were hurling really, really well. That they were getting like Adam English in the corner as well looked really lively too. And they just looked to be like Declan Hannon and Dan Morrissey were hoovering up everything too as well. And then I suppose at half time, I suppose Cork came out early enough. Limerick were very late coming out of the change room at half time. And straight from the throw in, Tommy O'Connell's tearing into Tom Morrissey as well. And just those young Cork players, I thought, really, really stood up in the second half, particularly in the back line. Like, Owen Downey at fullback looked absolutely brilliant. And that, yeah, he's a fellow that, look, he clearly is very early in his strength and conditioning programme because you look at him beside Flanagan, who's been sculpted into that position after a few years at SNC. Whereas Downey's a big, big, strong, tall fellow as well, but just doesn't look like he had the same build as well. But I thought he was absolutely brilliant. He hit, hit an inspirational score as well. And he just looked really, really good. So he looks like a player that can that could really be built upon. Conor O'Callum beside him, really Tigerish cornerback as well. O'Connell, I already mentioned, and look, Kieran Joyce, like running out of words to describe him. He's absolutely fantastic as well. That just the, the, like the inspirational figure that he is. And just like, I think for Cork, yeah, they, they, their team was probably closer to their starting 15, I'd say later on in the championship than what Limerick's is going to be. But look, it's a good, it's a good win for them as well. And that, to come back from 16-8 down, they were excellent in the second half. And just to briefly touch on as well, really, really hope that Robbie O'Flynn's injury isn't serious because at the time it was absolutely sickening to watch just the sheer discomfort that he was in as well and how well he was been playing. They found that new role for him in the corner forward, dropping out position. He looked really, really good. So, like, I really, really hope his championship isn't over. Yeah, no, 100%. Because he's been, in my opinion, he's really gone under the radar as someone that, consistently, consistently for Cork, he brings a 7 out of 10, 8 out of 10 performance every time he steps on the pitch for them. And his goal and Declan Dalton's goal, where he pulled on it into the back of the net, they turbocharged Cork's comeback. Talk to me about the goals. Yeah, look, the, the Robbie O'Flynn was needed was that, look, that was the stage of the game. That started to get Cork back into it as well. Dalton, I don't think I can recall him in the first half getting on a single possession that it just, the ball didn't come his way whatsoever. And then the second half, he he essentially only had kind of two touches really in it. There he laid the assist for O'Flynn for the goal, and then he pulls in the goal on the ball for the goal himself. So look, it shows the the what what there is there with Dalton too, and I think that he's definitely a player worth sticking with for Cork as well. Is that just he has that potential and he's got goals in him as well that we've seen that him do it before for Cork too. So look, and I think the other big impact at Kingston off the bench was really electric, and on a day when Lahan probably didn't fire as well as well. Like he seemed to be, he seemed to be, his confidence seemed to be really low and he was making mistakes all over the place. But when the big moment at the end of the game with the score to, to level it up as well, he hit that score. So look, I think they, they'll be enthused by that as well. But like I said, I don't think Limerick will be too worried because when they looked fit for the first 50 minutes of that game, they were playing really, really good stuff as well. And they did lose Hannon to like what looked like a bit of a cut in his hand anyway as well. He went off after about the 15-minute mark. Hegarty went off. And look, Keane Lynch came on from him, yeah, but like it was clear that Lynch hasn't really got a whole lot of work done. He didn't really look uh, he didn't look himself on the day. So they they have to ease him back into it as well. So like I think I think Cork would be delighted to have got the win. But at the same time, like I think it's the same thing as last year where I don't think Limerick will be too concerned at all. And I think they'll actually probably be very satisfied with their performance because I think they showed a lot of a lot of positive signs, albeit they will be a little bit worried about look, the it was a tough debut for David McCarthy in his debut in goals. So I thought he found it quite difficult as well. And then in the full back line, the backups Richie English and Aaron Costello definitely got the run around as well from the Cork forwards too. So that's I think the only slight concern is that they're the only two lines I think that Limerick were probably be a bit disappointed with. Yeah, and then another positive, I thought Colin Coughlin, again, looked fantastic at wing-back for Limerick throughout the game, even when Cork had them on the back foot. But definitely a perfect start for Pat Ryan, and then the score at the end to win it. Just incredible scenes.